Hello, and welcome to Local Time. I'm your host, Jim Byers. Very glad to be here with you today, especially because we're having the opportunity to introduce you to a great organization, ArtStream, that exists to provide uh, artistic opportunities for underserved communities. And here with us, we have the president of the organization, Patricia Woolsey. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Uh, Casey Hamaki, who is one of the performers with this great group. How are you? Welcome. I'm good. Glad. Thank you for being here with You're us. You're welcome. And also Jeffrey Lewis, mm -hmm. who is the chairperson of the board of ArtStream. Correct. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Patricia, why don't you uh, start us off and tell us a little bit more about this organization. What, what, what is it exactly does it exist to do? Well, ArtStream was founded by a group of artists because we felt there were not enough artistic ex opportunities for people in the community, people who didn't normally get an opportunity to experience the arts, like people with disabilities, um, people in hospitals. The, uh, we are very involved with the hospice movement in Montgomery County, providing performance opportunities for children who are grieving. Mm -hmm. And we hope to go into hospitals soon as well. And we just believe that it is the right and it is a beautiful thing that everybody's creative spirit needs to be expressed and that it is just an essential part of your humanity. And so we want to be able to provide these experiences for all people. Absolutely. Wonderful. So. Wonderful. And what, um, what inspired you to start an organization? Because a lot of us sit around and, <laughs> and we say, oh, it would be a great idea to do X, Y, or Z, or wouldn't it be wonderful if this opportunity were offered? Mm -hmm. But what inspired you to, uh, to make the change and, and uh, start this organization? Complete insanity. Oh, <laughs> great, okay. <laughs> yeah. It was, a group of us got together and we began talking and it was, there was quite a, a gestation period. It was uh -huh. about six months. And then as we started putting the word out to friends and other allies we had in organizations, they said, oh, that's great. Why don't you come in and do this project? And then that led to another project. Then that led to another project. So very organically, it, we began to get jobs even before we had incorporated or done any of the steps to actually form a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So. The, the thirst and the need for this type of work just seems so apparent in the community that it just seemed our, our duty and our right to do it that, it, that the community really wanted this, and so we wanted to be able to provide this. Mm -hmm. So um, we met for about six, we were, had been having meetings for about six months, and then we got incorporated, and now we've got our paperwork, and we received our 501c3 status, and we're uh, you know, a full nonprofit now, raising money and out working in the community, and just seem, seems to keep growing and growing, and we're getting more and more phone calls expressing interest in our work, which is really exciting. Beautiful, and more and more advocates and participants on your side, like Jeffrey here, yes. who has uh, joined <coughs> with the organization, and what brought you to, uh, to ArtStream? Well, unfortunately, this is just a half an hour show because it's going to take about a couple of hours <laughs> before I tell you what it's I was born in the house of my father. <laughs> it is actually a very interesting story. Uh, one of my neighbors and very close friends, Nicolette Stearns, who's also on the board of ArtStream, uh, sort of came up to me one day. And just to real quick give you some background, um, I also sit on the board of Roundhouse Theater in Bethesda. I sit on the board of Junior Achievement. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I sit on the board of Tappers with attitude. Oh. Uh, a lot of these are obviously geared to children and I have a sort of an affinity to to uh, to sitting on boards that help out kids and giving back to the communities. And that's what I love to do. And of course uh, Nicolette knew that I was uh, chair of some of these boards as well as uh, on the boards and she said, Jeff, I have something I got to run by you. And I <laughs> said, uh oh, what's this? She said, we have a great organization we like to start but unfortunately what we have is a bunch of dedicated artists who know nothing about business <laughs> <laughs> and how to run an organization. Okay. Can you lend some guidance and help? And I said, absolutely. All right. So uh, and I, know, I had known Patty before. We had uh, uh, had uh, sort of acquaintances before. And when Patty walked into the room and, th and the gang walked into the room and, and I chatted with them and started to give them some guidelines, uh, I sort of said, this is just an incredible organization and thought that you guys are trying to bring to the table. I would really love to be a part of it. So I uh, talked with Patty. Patty and I both agreed that maybe as the first chairman to kind of really set things on that I would come on board to be the first chair and uh, help try to put it all together. But mm -hmm. believe me, they do most of the work. They are unbelievable, very dedicated, and we're just trying to take it to another level. Well, that's wonderful. But it, it of course, takes that partnership mm -hmm. between culture and business, particularly in uh, Western culture and in, in American culture, mm -hmm. where, right. uh, you know, the it's so important to have those, the, the access to fundraising to, to and fundraising 
raisers okay. uh, and, and people with the connections within the business community. No so worries. that's a wonderful thing uh, to be bringing that, that vision together. Mm -hmm. And that vision is being brought together and synthesized through uh, some of the performers of uh, the group. And uh, Casey is here with us. Yeah. Why don't you share with us, how did, yeah. how did the organization cross your path or how did you cross paths with the organization? Well, um, I have been in acting for that years. I'm acting on stage. <laughs> And I've been working with Kira Gunny for a lot of years. And then I think Kira told me about Artstream, um, going into that. So I went into Artstream. It was in Virginia, and we live right in Virginia. So that was really great for me. Fantastic. <laughs> and you've been really involved with, <coughs> um, with several other or, uh, organizations uh, for, for quite some time. Yes. You've been performing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your, your uh, performing history? Um, well, I've been um, performing on Imagine the Stage for about eight years, and I'm in a career called Imagine Working. They have a career, and I was in a movie. Beautiful. Beautiful. We work with people with disabilities to find a job and how to get a job the steps of how to get a job. Fantastic. And, w and what does the, the opportunity to, to perform, uh, what does that mean to you uh, individually? Well, um, to me is I'm really natural at performing and I have a really good memory so they give me a lot of parts in a script. Uh, there you That's go. <laughs> That's true. You can fantastic. memorize lines. <laughs> so, <laughs> a wonderful actress. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, and, and and you promise we've got the twenty-piece orchestra off to the side. You're, you, maybe you'll, you'll grace us with a song a little bit later. <laughs> we'll work on the orchestra, but maybe the song. <laughs> Patricia, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more? You're going to be doing a program uh, here in in Arlington mm -hmm. yeah. pretty soon, right? Yeah. Well, uh, one of the visions for Artstream was that we can take these, these programs and actually go out into the communities so that we can offer programs for people in Virginia and then we have a program in Silver Spring, we have programs in Gaithersburg, so people from that area don't have to drive so far to one collective area. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. it was very exciting and many of the actors I had been working with for years in Bethesda um, came, commuted from Virginia, so they were very excited to have a program right in their backyard. And then they can form friendships within their community and go to movies and dinner and whatever on the weekends mm -hmm. and it can be very active socially as well. So we were very excited to be starting the Arlington program. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we started offering classes in the spring, and then we uh, continued through the summer. And then we held auditions for our play in the fall, in September. And what we do is we, um, they come up with a theme that they want to work on. We come up with lots of ideas. We vote it down until it gets down to one theme. Then we improvise it, and then I write a script based on their ideas. Mm -hmm. And each part is tailor-made for the actors we have that year. So if somebody is very good at memorizing lines like Casey, I can give her lots of lines. <laughs> but if somebody is not so comfortable initiating lines but can respond, I can write those lines accordingly. Or if somebody is nonverbal and a beautiful mover, I can make, create a dance part for them. So it's a very interesting process, and it's a very organic process. Mm -hmm. And so this show, this year, the theme they voted on was love, which is a very easy theme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not too broad. <laughs> <laughs> and so we came up with a show, it's called That Thing Called Love. And it really does look at um, different pitfalls and successes that we all go through in our quest for love. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting show. It's a very funny show. It's a very touching show. And then, luckily, Carol Gully, who had been working with us, um, has created some original music for us as well. So it is a musical. Fantastic. Yeah. So we are going to get to hear you sing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Her fairy godmother scene, she has a song. Oh, uh, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and that play is uh, going to be performed when? It's going to be, be performed March 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 29th, 30th, and 31st, the last two weekends of the month, okay. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, at Thomas Jefferson Community Center. Wonderful. And we'll talk a little bit more about, about that program later in the show. Sure. But um, I, I also want to acknowledge the organization was honored recently. And I know I don't want to put you in the position of, of talking about yourself and tooting your own horn. So I'll, so I'll ask Jeffrey. Oh, no. To <laughs> give, it, give it over to Patty. Give it over to Patty. She loves to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in the house of my father. <laughs> But the organization was recently uh, given an award, isn't mm -hmm. that correct, yes. uh, from, from Arlington County? Yes, we were. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? We were awarded for um, bringing the arts to people with disabilities in Arlington County, along with, um, I think, nine other organizations. And it's just so wonderful that there's so much artistic material here in Arlington County and that the arts are so well supported here. And it was just a beautiful ceremony. 
And yeah, so so they were acknowledging uh, people who work in the arts with people with disabilities. Fantastic. It was a wonderful award. Well, congratulations to you. to you and to the organization yes. and to the performers. It's very exciting. <coughs> and do you yourself uh, come from a, a, a background as a performer? Yes, I was a, a drama major, acting major in college. Wonderful. And then uh, I saw a show about doing theater with people with disabilities on TV, and it hit me very hard that that is what I wanted to do. I'd never had any exposure to it before and I found the place and I started working and I've been doing it ever since and I just yeah it's been my favorite job I've ever had wonderful wonderful so. you found your found your path yeah, through the organization yeah. and now do you do you also get an opportunity to to perform yourself I mean even a bit <laughs> role or something in the in the in the play I <laughs> usually stay behind the scenes there's, there's enough work to do behind the scenes <laughs> 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 there you go. I direct it and write it and then let them have it we'll sit in the audience and go <laughs> Perfect. You don't even let Jeffrey get on stage. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I he's could been itching. I could write a part for him. I get all the intros to talk about how to raise money at the beginning of the shows. That's great. <laughs> the most important line. That's right. <laughs> most important line. Give me. No. That's exactly. right. <laughs> Said very nicely. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. That's <laughs> wonderful. And the organization also has some other uh, programs. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the other uh, activities that you have going on? I know there's certain camps and, and different things that, that have occurred. Well, no, no camps um, right now, uh, mm -hmm. but we are, we are doing poetry and dance classes with an organization in Maryland called um, CSAC, which is Community Services for Autistic Adults and Children. Mm. And we provide poetry and uh, poetry and dance classes to people with severe autism. So we actually go into their environment and provide these classes and with huge success. And we've been partnering with them since September of 2005, I believe. They were one of our first partnerships. Um, and then every year we work with Hospice Caring to provide shows and puppet workshops for children who are grieving, who have just lost either one or both parents. Um, and we are about to start uh, some senior classes at Leisure World, mm. providing artistic experiences for them. And then we have ongoing classes for people with disabilities and then the four performing companies. Um, we inherited two of the performing companies from Imagination Stage. Mm. They wanted to refocus their mission on children. So we inherited their adult access companies for people with disabilities. So we have expanded from two companies that we inherited to four in one year. So that shows, you <laughs> yes. that shows you quite a lot that has happened mm -hmm. and how hungry society is for it and that right. the community seems to be very supportive of this, which we're happy about. And uh, I mean, how fortuitous, I mean, it was, it was meant to be. I mean, yeah. that's what those things mean mm -hmm. when, it, when it comes your way. That's wonderful, yeah. that's wonderful. If you don't mind, mm -hmm. if, you, if you wouldn't mind sharing with me, everybody I think that works in the arts, works in, in, in culture, has a moment, or, and works with it, I mean, in any way, or shape or form. <coughs> um, uh, share with us a moment. You know, I know you were talking about working with children who were grieving, and of course the, the differently abled communities that you work with us. Mm -hmm. Share with us a moment that, that stands out as, mm -hmm. as something that, that um, strengthened your resolve, mm -hmm. In, in working with the organization? Well, I had one um, actor who I worked with, and he's my most dramatic example of how powerful the arts are. He came into my company, and he um, would sit in a corner and rock like this. And he wouldn't say anything, and he wouldn't participate, and he would just sit there and rock and cover his face. And I have learned through, through working with different populations that you don't, just because somebody isn't participating the way you think they should does not mean that they're not getting something out of it. So. You know, we have to take our own ego and our own self out of it and just, we don't know what they're getting out of it. So it came a long time to pick a part and, it, and you know, I said, do you, what part do you want to play? And he came up with a part and he said, when to do it. And from that moment on, he had been observing all this time. He got, he said his lines and his parents even said to me, he's not going to do it. He is not going to get up on stage and say his lines. And I said, yes, he will. They said, he's going to freak out because we're in the audience. I said, no, he's not. He's ready. He's going to do it. And he did it and he blew everybody away. He knew every line. And it, there was such a dramatic transformation. It was a long period of time, but once he made up his mind or decided that it was safe or decided that he was going to do it, he, there was just an enormous transformation. Mm -hmm. Then his parents came back to me and said, his behavior in school has changed. He's not so angry. He's really found something that can channel these emotions and how difficult it is to be a teenager with a disability, that he has a place that he's succeeding. Spectacular. And it's just... It gives me chills still mm -hmm, to think about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was one of my most dramatic examples. And we have, you know, small examples of that all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, the people at CSEC that we work with, mm -hmm. the counselors are amazed. They sit there 
ca some of them sit there catatonic part of the time, and for them to you know, say blow like the wind, and they blow like the wind, the counselors are amazed Wonderful. that there is that connection. Wonderful. So. And Casey, how about you? How, uh, working with, with, with other individuals and working yes. with, with, with other performers, uh, is there a particular moment that, or, or, or one of several that, that stands out for you as, as just a highlight of your work with, with uh, the organization? Well, it's been a great performing of our stream, and I really like it a lot. Mm -hmm. It's been, it really means a lot to me, being a performer. Um, I really love um, the people I work with, and our student, like Patty, and, um, and Kira Gutty. Mm -hmm. I say, um, I just, I just love to perform. I'm, I'm, I'm really natural on stage. Absolutely, and, and and natural in in any environment. We were having a great time talking <laughs> before, and I understand we're really lucky today because it's also it's hard to catch up with you, as I as I understand it, because you're the you know the social card is is just full. Yeah. You know, you're 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 on the go. She's talking about dinner. She's you know she's. Uh, yeah, no, I've got dinner after this. Yeah, no, okay, sorry. I mean, you know, but that's beautiful because the organization also provides other social bonds, if, if, if uh, I'm not mistaken. Yes. That's great. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And, and, and how about you, Jeffrey? Uh, uh, things that you have observed during uh, your tenure with the organization, anything that stands out as a well, particular moment? Well, yeah, actually really does touch home to me. Um, I have, as I mentioned before, I've got, uh, well, he's now 17, but he was a 15-year-old son mm -hmm. who was a semi-professional tap dancer. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I was on the board of Taps with Attitude. Um, well. Uh, one of the performances, uh, they had asked him, he's doing some community service with one of the groups, and uh, he was helping in the play to teach uh, uh, the actors how to do a small dance step. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just a 15-year-old kid trying to really g grasp what this whole thing of people with disabilities is all about. And he said he would come home, and I would see the look on his face when he would tell me that somebody who was, as Patty said, was just sitting in the corner, not doing anything, and they saw him perform and said, you know, I can do that as well, and just gave him such a, a, a great sense of accomplishment for him to get up there, show them the steps, let them do the steps, and then next thing you know, they created a whole little dance ensemble because of that. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievable, and I just saw my child grow mm -hmm. uh, along with that and seeing the whole play and everything else. So yeah, it touched, it touched me big time. That's and wonderful. It was, it was incredible. And uh, also just demonstrating how it, the organization ArtStream is providing a touchstone for the wider community that's to, to interact and interface with uh, the differently abled. And so, so that's, I mean, a wonderful thing. No question. That's, that's great. No question. Um, do you guys have a, a, a website? I want to make sure that we, that we uh, uh, mention that. If you could tell us what that website yes, is. www.art-stream.org. Okay, say that one more time. www.art-stream.org. Okay, I just want to make sure we get yeah. that in there. <coughs> We're going to co come back to it a little, a little later on, but I just want to make sure we get it in there because we want people to be able to uh, have access to the wonderful work that you're doing. Um, we talked about the award. We talked about uh, a little bit about the performance. Mm -hmm. um, you also, I, I saw you've, you've uh, um, engaged other plays written by, by um, uh, people from around the country. I saw there was a play that was performed by uh, someone from, is it Tennessee? Oh, um, we did we did a, a show last year called The Arkansas Bear. The Arkansas mm -hmm. Bear. Yes. Okay. And it was a play that was written by an award-winning playwright, Aaron Harris. And um, it was a, a play that to, was written to help children deal with the themes of death and grieving. And so we thought it was perfect to fit our mission. Mm -hmm. And um, we did that in conjunction with our work with Hospice Caring in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Um, that was a professional production. We hired professional actors and produced it at the Gaithersburg Arts Barn, and that, that went up last spring. Wonderful. And we're very proud of that production. As that's well you should be. That's great. And that's a great facility out there, too. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful facility. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. And it was very well received, and it was nice to, to have this partnership with Hospice Caring for this. Beautiful. And what's next on, on the horizon for, if there's, you know, without spilling the whole beans, yeah. and, you know, <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you envision as a, maybe one of your next big uh, projects or goals for the organization? Well, we have obviously the shows coming up in Virginia mm -hmm. in two weeks, so we're hoping that they will be well received and well attended by uh, the community. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we do have uh, our show, another inclusive performing company is performing at Roundhouse Silver Spring. Great. At their, their Silver Spring facility. Mm -hmm. 
And um, that is, doesn't have a title yet, but it's about superheroes. That's what they picked. So they each have a super superpower. And then we have two shows going up again at the Gaithersburg Arts Barn in June, also inclusive theater companies featuring people with disabilities. And they are going to be piggybacking on each other. One is called um, Saving the Starlight. It's about a theater that is going into ruins and that the actors are rallying around it. And then one is Return to, to the Starlight that I believe has ghosts coming back. And it's also <laughs> taking place in the same, same uh, venue, like a, an old 50s theater. Cool. So it's going to be a yeah. sort of a 50s theme thing. So we have those, and then we have upcoming classes um, in Virginia. We're sort of on a rotating schedule. We offer classes for people with disabilities when we're not in rehearsal. Mm -hmm. um, so in April, we will be starting the, the Arlington classes up. And then all three locations will offer um, classes in the spring. And then again, we're starting these Leisure World classes, and we're continuing with DSAC. And so we're just seeing where it leads. I think things are happening all the time, so we'll see where we end up. And so fast. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is true. This is true. <laughs> At speed, that's wonderful. <laughs> and, uh, and how about for you? Do you what do you uh, envision or hope for the organization in, in, in the future? Well, um, you mentioned a very good point. It, it is growing so fast. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do from an organizational standpoint is to really uh, seek and, and ask sort of the community for a little extra help. And, and what I mean by that, I'm still trying to build a, a nice size board of directors that we can really help do things in the community and kind of spread our, our, our name out there. Because we are doing things a lot faster and quicker than we had imagined. Mm -hmm. uh, as Patty po you know, pointed out, that we, we picked up two companies, you know, in, in less than a year, that really started us to really hyper-grow this organization. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking, we're looking at those. I'm looking at uh, building a board, uh, looking at uh, uh, the, the fundraising aspect, because we really want to uh, be able to offer these classes at a very, very manageable amount mm -hmm. for, our, for our clients. And, uh, and that's kind of our, uh, that's what the board has decided they really wanted to focus on. And uh, so I, I support that and I said, let's see how we can do that. So one of the things we have to do is kind of get out in the community and let people know who we are, what we are, uh, and, and ask for a little bit of help, uh, both uh, support, you know, physically and financially. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, you know, those are kind of my goals for the next couple of years to really, uh, to, to make sure that that is a go and uh, make sure it happens. Wonderful. Yeah. I'm sure it will, especially with uh, star performers <laughs> like Casey <laughs> here, Casey Hamaker. And, and, and what about you? What about your dreams and hopes for the organization? Any particular roles that you're, you know, Miss, you know, Sadie Thompson or, or you know, uh, 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 any, any particular role that you're hoping comes along to, that you want to play? Well, I know, I know, hopefully, Lois, because I, I'm a, I'm a, and uh, this um, play we're gonna be in, I'm, I have a big um, scene, and I'm a fairy godmother, uh, and I have a solo song. A fairy godmother and a solo song. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to go wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a big dream that I I, ha I have had. Tell us about it. Um, one of the biggest dreams I ever had was to be a playwright because I love to write. Wonderful. Fantastic. Wonderful. So you're gonna take your talents to the other side yes. of the stage. Yes. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Absolutely uh, amazing organization, ArtStream. And um, I, I'm so glad that you are, are able to share this with our listeners, if, if our uh, listeners and viewers, if uh, hopefully they're watching and listening. <laughs> <at the same time>. <laughs> <laughs> but if folks want to become involved in the organization, either as volunteers or, or on the board, how would they get in touch with you? By going to our website at www.art-stream.org. That's the best way to get in touch with us. One more time. www.art-stream.org. <laughs> or you can call our number at 301-975-1008. And is that also the number for tickets? Tickets for this performance, um, we're not taking reservations. This is going to be sold at the door. Sold at the door. Mm -hmm. And again, what is the uh, date of that performance? March 22nd, 23rd, 24th. 29th, 30th, 31st at Thomas Jefferson Community Center. Tickets are $10 and sold at the door. And we will also be selling some t-shirts and bumper stickers and other things at the event as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing with us uh, the, the wonders of ArtStream and bringing it uh, to our community uh, and bringing it in local time. That has been our program for this evening. I'm uh, your host, Jim Byers. For Local Time, thank you for joining us and be with us again as we explore the arts on Local Time. Thank you so much.
You have been watching The Art Show and Tell, a cultural alliance of Greater Washington program, brought to you by Arlington Independent Media and Double R Productions. For more information about performances and events throughout the region, visit cultural-alliance.org. That's cultural-alliance.org.